Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. In this video, I'm going to mount the front spring and then get an idea of how the front axle is going to set up with all of this. All right, so I got the front spring mounted in there now. You can see I made the, I bent these um, bolts around there to clamp that spring on there, and I really love how that turned out. I like the look of that. That oxyacetylene torch is a big help for doing any sort of bending like this. Um, definitely going to be using that a lot um, for this build in the future. So I have the front axle there just kind of set up. And you'll notice that's not the same axle as I had before. Before I had this, that's Ford I-beam axle in there. But this is a um, 1930s Dodge Plymouth um, front axle. It's like th got that double dip in it. It's a tube axle as opposed to the I-beam axle. And I'm using this one instead just because I really like the look of that one as opposed to um, the traditional I-beam axle. Um, and it shouldn't require too much work to get done. Um, what I want to do is mount the spring a little bit behind the axle like this. So I'll build, have to build some bracket there to mount the spring um, perch on. 
but that shouldn't be too bad. The kingpin size for this axle is a little bit smaller than the Ford spindles, so that'll have to be um, reamed out a little bit to accept these Ford spindles, but that shouldn't be too bad either. And what I want to do for um, the front suspension is do like a four bar suspension, which is when you have two bars on each side that kind of come back from the axle parallel with each other and then mount on the back of the frame. Kind of like a um, a hairpin style, but instead of coming back to one point, it, they go back to their own separate mounting points. When I build the bracket for that, I'll just incorporate the the spring perch in that bracket so it can all be kind of one piece there and then that'll all work out. So that's where I am with this build now. In the next video, you'll see me working on that. Once I get the front axle um, connected to the spring here, then I can work on the front, I guess, not really, not suspension, but that four bar setup I was talking about. And then the front end will be mostly completed, actually. Um, steering is, steering I'm going to worry about later on. At this point, I'm just kind of focused on getting a rolling chassis. So I'm, I'm working on the front end here first, then I'll move on to the back, getting this nice banjo rear end in there. The other thing I have here that a friend dropped off recently is, um, this is the center piece from the a banjo rear. I think this is a 48 rear end, but this has an open drive to it, which means that the drive shaft is like open um, as, a, as opposed to what this has, a closed drive shaft, where you have this big long torque tube here with the drive shaft inside of it. And an open drive shaft is a lot more convenient for everything because it doesn't matter what kind of engine, what kind of transmission you have in there. Um, the amount of space that takes up because you can just lengthen or shorten the drive shaft. With a closed drive shaft like this though, you have that big torque tube there and the drive shaft going up through it and you're going to have to shorten or lengthen all of that and it's just, it's just a world of complications. So that's just something to think about for the future. I might end up going with this. I might just use the closed drive shaft though. We'll have to see. So anyways, that's all I have for you for this video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.